Welcome to In It to Win It. This is Steve Barton, and thank you for tuning in. We're here for Monday Market Moves, what happened last week in the markets and what we expect for next week. And thank you for allowing me to do work that I find meaningful. Thank you for giving me the most valuable commodity you have, your attention. I promise to do my very best to give you a return on it. All righty, let's go to the charts. Starting out as always with the S&P 500. This is really interesting. Okay, so we broke through the 20 day moving average, hit right on the 50 day moving average and bounced up. And what's really interesting about this is if I go to the hourly here, we can see that each bar represents an hour. This second to the last bar on Friday inside of an hour, I'm sorry, the last bar on Friday, second to the last on the 30 minute, this actually moved 1%. Uh, the S&P 500 jumped 1% just in that half hour right there. So about <laughs> an hour and a half before the market closed, I was pretty sure my bias was gonna be the downside for the S&P 500. But since we had this strong little uh, uh, reversal bar there, it is down half of 1% for the week. Um, but that's, kind of bullish looking. So uh, actually biases the upside for next week. We got resistance up here at 53.43. Dollar, <clears throat> the dollar is down about 0.1%, came right down on the 200 and the 100 moving average bounced up. And that's a tough one to call because it's kind of right in the 50% zone there. My bias would be to the upside for the first few days next week for the dollar. Two-year yield closed at 4. 8.8, 10 year yield closed at four and a half percent. And the 10 minus the two year yield, this is uh, pretty interesting. This is a 21% change since last week as far as the yield curve inversion. So when we see this going up, that means the 10 year yield is paying more than the two year yield. Didn't think it would pierce this 200 day moving average, but it did and then shot right back up. So I still think we're going to be generally going like this but um yeah interesting interesting uh um getting closer and closer to that uh, zero percent line one month treasury still paying north of five percent tlt this is a bet that we've had going on for a while and closed my position uh just a little bit before the market closed on friday today um my reasoning for this is <clears throat> excuse me um after it was, it was a small position, it was one and a half percent of the portfolio. I lost nine percent on the trade with with inflation. And that's not great, and that's counting all the dividends that I got. Uh, I thought a lot about what David Skrika said in the last episode about the bond vig vigilantes, and I'm I would rather take that cut and just be sitting in uh, 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 T bills paying five percent guaranteed than. Uh, this was occupying a lot more of my mental capacity than the, than the position in the portfolio was worth. And uh, so I just thought, you know what, let's just get out of this uh, with some skin and uh, I'll just keep it in cash. I want to kind of liquidate some positions here, get a little bit more defensive. And um, uh, this was one of the ones that, that got cut. Uh, basic bond traders are some of the smartest people on the planet. And I think I have a real edge when it comes to, you know, uh, buying gold stocks and not so much of an edge uh, competing against the, uh, the geniuses of the, uh, on the planet. Dow Jones Industrial Average. Uh, Peter Granich said he missed his uh, opportunity to short the Dow up here. You might get another opportunity. Got a heck of a reversal bar here on Friday. Uh, so we might get back up there. We'll see. But I wouldn't have caught this one either. We had a we had a higher high here in the Dow Jones. If it lined up perfectly right there with a the little reversal bar, I think that'd be a, a nice little catch. But since it went higher, that's kind of a tough one. And gold, gold is up 0.5%, closed the week at 2345, just riding this 50-day moving average. Is some downside risk on this. Wouldn't surprise me at all if it uh, consolidates and breaks through the 50 moving average, but uh, looking fantastic for gold. I mean, uh, my target for the end of the year at the beginning was 2,500 on gold. I think gold will be at 3,000 uh, by the end of 2025. Maybe that's pretty conservative. Um, we'll see, 
but you know, if we get a liquidity crisis, this is definitely going to get hit, but I really don't think it's going to get down below here. I don't think it'll go below 2000. So we'll see. And gold to uh, S&P 500. So this is gold divided by the S&P 500. Still below uh, that half ratio at 0.5. We close the week at 0.444. CEF down a quarter of 1%. So this is where air quotes here are our physical gold and silver. This is kind of where you start the gold and silver portfolio by the metal itself first. Um, if gold and silver get whacked, then this does as well. If it goes up, then so does this. GDX up 0.1%. Really liking this. I think this is an easy beta way uh, for most retail investors to play the gold miners. Not all the companies in here are good. Uh, some of them are great. A lot of them are middle of the road, but it's an easy, easy beta way to play this thing. I don't see any entries right now. Uh, I'd like to see gold consolidate just a little bit more. Uh, maybe we can pick this up along the 50 moving average. GDX up one point, what is that? 1.2% for the week. Same kind of thing, just staying above this two, uh, 20 moving average. Like to see a little consolidation down here before making an entry, maybe somewhere around 42, 43 bucks. And Franco, Nevada, we even put a little orange circle here for this. Everyone knows what that is, right? We got the yellow line crossing the purple. That is a golden cross. So we've got the 50 moving average crossing above the 200 moving average bullish sign for Franco, Nevada. Um, I think last week I said, uh, set a uh, stink bid in here for 121. That did not hit. I would probably move that limit order up to something like 122, 123. Hopefully it kind of comes down and touches that. Wheat and precious metals down 2.3%. We have resistance up here at 58 and we have support uh, down around 50 to 52. So that might create a nice entry point. And Gold Royalty Corporation, got a lot of questions on this one. Uh, oh, I'm approaching the first world problem of having more company questions than I have time to answer. Uh, so get them in first and I'll filter for the ones that have the most thumbs up and I'll start working my way down from there. So thank you guys for putting in all the company questions and helping me with content. Um, get, uh, get popular ones in there and then, then they'll show up uh, first. If I can get to all of them, then I will. Okay, so Gold Royalty Corporation. Uh, what the heck happened here? Okay, it's down 15% for the week. Had an option in here. So we've just been buying this thing. We started uh, uh, buying more on the way down around $2. I think our cheapest bid was like a buck 30. Yeah. And we got pretty close to down that. So I had another, uh, I had two limit orders hit, hit down here. Uh, right around this 200 moving average. This yellow one is an option. It was a... Uh, uh, $2.50 strike in October, and um, I got it for $10 a contract. Uh, so pretty excited about that one. I think this company is going to do really well. Uh, okay, so basic overview, 266 market cap as of today. They acquired a copper stream, and to buy it, they issued about 20 million shares at a buck 72 a share, which came out to 34 and a half million dollars uh they got warrants going out three years um at a uh, exercise price of two dollars and 25 cents so quick math is they uh basically kind of diluted 14 percent. but at one point this dropped by uh, what was it like 20 or 25 uh yeah like 25 percent. so i think it's a pretty good deal one thing i like about this too is before this acquisition they had something like 95 percent of their royalties were in gold and now we have a copper stream that's supposed to go online end of quarter 2024 uh so in about six months or so and um uh, i think copper is going to do very well they did the math on this, uh, calculating for $2,000 gold, which I don't think it'll go below 2000, even coming into a recession. And they did it on 425 copper. That one, I'm not so sure going into a recession. Dr. Copper usually gets hit with recessions, but I like that they did 425 copper and not something like 450. 
Um, so we'll see. I left a message with David Garofalo. I want to get him back on the show and I'll be interviewing him uh, out in uh, Boca Raton. So stay tuned. Metalla Royalty up 2.6%. Like this one a lot. We got a golden cross right here. Unfortunately, the uh, 200 moving average is sloping down. If we can just get some sideways action, maybe even a little bit up, maybe get picked up by this 50 moving average, then we'll start to upslope on the 200 moving average, and that will look quite bullish. Origin Royalties is up 2% for the week. Um, this last purchase was a real technical no-no. <laughs> a real technical no-no. I mean, all the... Uh, uh, Everything is just screaming in the clouds here. Why in the world did we buy? Well, this was a thank you, Adrian Day, when we had him on the show. If you guys didn't check that out, uh, make sure you check out Adrian's episode on this. Uh, he talks for about eight minutes on origin royalties. It starts at 32 minutes on the episode. And basically, he said that he thinks this thing has a long way to go, probably another uh, uh, 50 cents from this point. So we got that one in at 83 I don't see any buys on this, even me buying this one. I don't know that I could buy this one knowing that it's worth another 30 cents, but if you wanted to get into it, I think it's still a good deal. And bear gold up 0.4% for the week. I think a limit order around 1625 would be good. And that's not real scientific. It's just lining up here with the 200 moving average. They just paid a dividend. Uh, so we got the X dividend date is today. Uh, Friday the 31st payment goes out in a couple of weeks um, like this one a lot I think for the bull market and gold the one of the biggest gold miners on the planet should do quite well Newmont flat for the week $38 continues to be the support got a golden cross right here $38 lines up uh, almost exactly with the 200 moving average which should just start sloping up right here uh, looking uh, looking really good for Newmont. And the one, our favorite, Agnico Eagle, up three quarters of 1%, still defying gravity, although it is starting to move sideways, which I do like. Uh, I'd like to see this consolidate a little bit sideways, maybe even a little bit of uh, downward action here, and we might be able to pick up some more on the 50 moving average there. And B2 Gold up 1.5 percent for the week so had the limit order hit down here for 250 uh 240 was a pipe dream and probably is still uh don't see any entries right now maybe if it gets back down to this like 100 or 50 moving average the real resistance right now is this 200 moving average which has finally started to level out and uh we just got to break through that equinox gold <clears throat> down 2.7 for the week. So in this uh, FIB retracement right here, I'd like to see a double bottom. See if this could kind of grind like sideways to down right here and then match up perfectly with this 200 moving average falling right in this Fibonacci range right in here. Uh, I think that would be a really, really nice entry point, assuming the technical support it when it gets there. G Mining Ventures, get on the train. Uh, we had our limit order hit for a buck fifty-five. It closed the week at a buck fifty-four, so you can get it even cheaper than we did. Um, this was back. Uh, this is thanks to Jordan Royburn and the, at the Daily Gold and his subscription service. And this was Rick Rule's boot camp, and uh, where we doubled down and we bought even more. <laughs> so really believe in this company. Uh, I think this is going to be an excellent play very leveraged they have a um a uh, uh their token uh token of zeo um mispronouncing that mine in brazil that is coming online uh here pretty soon uh second half of uh, 2024 and rio 2 basically flat for the week although kind of volatile cup and handle has broken out um they're getting their financing love this uh i think it's going to be very leveraged to gold and uh, this could potentially be a five or maybe even a 10 bagger a lot of these companies we're talking about here uh, will be at the rural symposium in boca raton i'll be out there with the missus shaking hands and kissing babies i would love to see you out there 
uh, and share beverage, maybe even on the boat cruise. Uh, Rick has set us up with our own interview room. Uh, it's going to be in the Misner Wing, room 180. So come by and say hi. If you can't make it in person, join us for the live stream at half the cost in the comfort of your own home. Uh, the link is in the pinned comment below. I would love to see you there. Alrighty, silver is down for the week. Well, basically flat. We'll call it flat. It's only a couple cents. Uh, so got up to 32 and then shot back down, closed the week at $30.44. I think David might be right. We, this might be our $30 floor right here. We got the white line there. It's got to obey, right? So the gold to silver ratio shot down, got as low as 72 and then shot right back up to 77. Didn't think it would get below 75, but it did for a hot minute and then shot right back up. Um, yeah, interesting. I would like to see this go down and then our silver stocks will do really, really, really well. <laughs> SILJ Junior Silver Miners ETF is up 2% for the week. Don't see any entries into this. You know, the entries are down here. Uh, on this end of the chart, we consider selling, but not selling any of our precious metals miners or the metal um, as of yet, <laughs> but uh, we'll definitely be watching for that. Yeah, maybe a pullback down here around 11 bucks or so might create an interesting entry point. Pan American Silver up 4.5%. Cup and Handle is playing out beautifully. Upside target to $28 is probably where we'll take our first uh, trim, even put a little downward arrow up there in anticipation of that. Not that we would forget, but uh, it's nice to see how much more we expect it to run from this cup and handle pattern. And Fresnelio is up 1% for the week, close the week at $7.75. Again, just don't see any entries into these silver stocks right now. It's actually tapping on quite a bit of resistance right here. Do have a golden cross. Uh, but would like to see it consolidate down uh, towards this 200 moving average somewhere around $6.80, $6.90, something like that. First Majestic Silver is up. Is it up? No, I'm sorry. It's flat. Flat for the week. Hopefully it'll get caught by this 50 moving average. If silver bounces up, this is going to go up parabolically, highly leveraged to silver, and has a cult following. following. That is one of the main reasons we are in it. And silver crest metals sold just a took 20% off the table right there. Obviously sold a little too early because it continued to go up. Um, but uh, yeah, I love this company a lot. Uh, very leveraged to silver, only about a billion market cap. Well, I guess that's not only, that's quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, just riding this 20 day moving average, like it's going out of style. This is amazing. But for any kind of entry into this, we're going to need to see a retracement down here somewhere around. I don't know, seven fifty, seven bucks, something like that. And Endeavor Silver up five point six percent for the week. This was the number one pick of David. If you didn't see his episode, I'll put a link up here for you to watch it. He called this one down here at a buck fifty, and it is just running. Um, so yeah, I don't see any entries at this point at all. But maybe if it had some kind of retracement back down here, that might create a neat entry point. And copper, paging Dr. Copper down 3.2% for the week, hit a record high uh, week before last of $5.20. You know, when things go parabolic like this, they almost never continue, uh, unless you're a tech stock. <laughs> uh, but getting a retracement here, just hitting on some uh, uh, resistance right about where it is now, which lines up pretty well with some back technical resistance back here. If I go back to the... Uh, back to the weekly, you can see there's a lot of price action uh, around where I drew this white line, which is $4.25, which is around where, uh, which is pretty much what uh, G, G Wright, Gold Royalty Corporation valued their new uh, copper asset at. But next level of support is gonna be around $2.50. And COPX is down 1%, probably going to play catch up. Uh, we've got, let me go to the daily, there we go. Uh, had a little bit of a double bottom right here. Uh, so drew the white line in where there's uh, support just going back. And uh, that's going to be around 
47.50 or so. But technicals are still kind of high. Want to see this sell off just a little bit more, and then that might create an entry point. But with a likely coming in uh, recession, probably not going to add to any copper positions until we see how that irons out. COPJ down 1.4%, looks very similar to uh, COPX, just doesn't have the time frame. And this one's a lot more leveraged, but would love to see this get washed out, especially in a recession. And maybe we'll get some buying opportunities where we had them back here before. We'll see. Arizona Metals, this one uh, performed like a boss this week, up 16%, closed the week at a buck 90. Uh, I almost got some back down here around $1.50 and I never did, regretting that now. Uh, I think a big jump in this, uh, Michael Gentile, um, uh, go to Peter Granich's uh, uh, YouTube channel and check out his uh, latest interview with Michael Gentile and they go over uh, Arizona metals quite a bit in detail for about 20 minutes. And uranium down, I closed the week at $88.75, summer reporting $88.50, semantics. Uh, I believe this is just gonna continue this general, since, since the correction, we've just had a nice little general uptrend right here. I think that is probably going to continue. The one thing that had me uh, uh, wondering here, I talked about this last week, was this bear flag in the, uh, let me squeeze this down so we can get a little bit better view here. So bear flag right here, just chops kind of sideways up. And then we broke down below that on Thursday and Friday. So we'll see if there's, if there's more selling pressure coming off in this. We have the 200 moving average here to catch it. Although I don't know how much you can go buy technicals on something like this. If we go to the uh, Sprott Physical Uranium Trust website, we can see that we have, uh, we're still trading at a six and a half percent discount. So you can get $22 worth of uranium for only less than 21 bucks. Not a bad deal. Did not add any pounds this week because it was trading at a discount, but we've got almost $6 billion worth of uranium sitting in a warehouse unavailable to the utilities. Uh, so love that. And Adrian said, could you perhaps consider adding yellow cake to your uranium coverage? Competitor for Sput. So here is yellow cake. Now they trade at quite the discount. So if they're reporting 80, 89.50 here and the implied uh, yellow cake uh, uranium price on this is only $80.04. <clears throat> I remember asking Justin about this before and he said, it always seems to trade at a pretty good discount. Uh, I don't really know why. We're going to have Justin on the show here in a couple of weeks. We can pick his brain on that. And as far as the charts, sir, this is what it looks like here. I would probably be looking for a little bit more of a pullback. I mean, in something like this, if you think that uranium is going to go up in price, you can kind of throw your hat into the market here, especially with a discount like they had of north of 10%, almost anywhere. But if you're looking at a technical entry price, I'd be looking somewhere down around here on the low 600s, something like that, just lining up back with this. And Cameco is up 5% for the week. So although uranium went down, the miner went up. It's kind of cool. Um, yeah, looking great. Looking fantastic. I mean, just shooting the moon. What does it look like back if we go way back here? Oh, wow. Just tapping on all-time highs back here in 07. That's pretty cool. We might have gotten a new all-time high. It looks like we did. Just touched it. Uh, but usually when you bounce up against these like this, uh, it takes a couple times for it to break through. We'll see if that happens. And Kazatom Prom, they paid a dividend. It was what they call juicy, uh, $2 and something cents a share. Uh, $2.74 a share if you're an American. So back here, we're talking 38.50 was a great entry point. If you got it, uh, good on you. And you got a great dividend. They, they only pay once a year, but the dividend yield, I think, is north of 4% if my math is right. Oh, no, even better, 6.9. Uh, 6.69. Uh, 
per uh, <laughs> per dividend. Very, very cool. Let me check one thing here. I thought it was an annual dividend. Maybe it's uh, monthly. Yeah, annual. Yeah, okay. I'm not crazy. All right. URA, the ETF, uh, Global X Uranium. Uh, this one is up three quarters of 1%. We've got support around 31, resistance up here at 34. URNM is up half of 1%. Uh, we've got some support around 55 or so, which is right around this level right here. I really like an entry around 50 bucks. I don't know if it'll get there or not, uh, but uh, resistance is gonna be up here around $60 now. It shot up there and then corrected back down. And URNJ, this is the one that I'm excited about. I'm not going to be adding any more to URNM. I might be trimming this one, actually, and putting it into URNJ. We'll see. Uh, but uh, love URNJ. This is the junior miners. If we get hit with a recession, these are probably going to get whacked. I mean, this, although it is generally outperforming the S&P 500, you know, it does kind of follow it as the S&P 500 goes down. Usually you'll have pullbacks in these. Uh, but uh, money is flowing into it, which is awesome. Uh, so love this one a lot. Uh, support is going to be around $26 resistance uh, up here around 30. UROI, oh, I'm sorry, ratios here. So we got URNM divided by uh, the spot price of uranium and this trend line going back for uh, about a year and a half, a little bit longer than that actually, is finally breaking to the upside. So not a huge fan of these trend lines, but this is pretty undeniable. And URNM, the miners have been outperforming the metal since February of this year. URNJ divided by URNM. So this is what I'm talking about, that the juniors are generally outperforming uh, the, the big companies. Uh, look at that, just a general sloping up. URNJ divided by the two majors, Cameco and Kazatomprom, and a general trend up. Okay, URNJ divided by uh, Cameco, Kazatomprom, and the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust. And look at that, just a general line up. So assuming we don't have a stock market crash, this is probably going to continue. Uroy down 1.8%. Still got a lot of support right around $2.50. Uh, liking this one a lot. Looks like a little bit of a double bottom. Biases to the downside for early part of next week. Got a long dated option on this that expires in October. Uh, just got to get above that 200 moving average and sustain it. But I like that the 200 moving average is sloping up. And some people like to watch the Qs. We like to watch the Us. Uh, energy fuels up 6.7% for the week. Looks fantastic. We broke through the 200 daily moving average and then just settled just below it. But uh, this one is looking fantastic going into next week. Bias is to the upside. Denison Mines up 4% for the week. Closed my position in Denison Mine. So got this one way back at the Rick Rule boot camp and then bought more. And I decided to close my position in this. I want to generally get a little more defensive. I think we're starting to see signs that the uh, market is going to start rolling over, uh, probably getting kind of ugly in the summer. And this is one less company that I have to study for an hour every month. Um, you know, I may look pretty stupid if they actually pull this. They have some of the highest grades on the planet. The problem is it's so far underground. They're using new technology to get it and pull it out. And uh, if they don't do it, this isn't going to be worth much at all. If they do, then this is going to be a grand slam. So I might uh, look like an idiot, but I think uh, I made 62% and I was happy with that. So. I exited stage left and I put it into something that uh, you will probably never guess. Uh, stay tuned and you will see. Next gen is down 1%. Um, yeah, I don't see any entries into this. I'd like to see it come back down. I mean, we got some support down here around seven bucks, which would probably line up with the 200 moving average by the time it got there. That might create a nice entry point, but a lot of these 
um, are just kind of middle of the road uh, uh, technical. So uh, Boss Energy, if anyone knows what happened to this one, I didn't have a chance to look it up. Hit right down on the 200 moving average, close the week at $3.10. Uh, but something must have happened to have a sell-off like that. It's down 13%. Put it in the notes below if you know what happened at Boss. Global Atomic down 2.5% for the week. Just kind of chopping sideways here. Fair amount of support where it is now. I might do a limit order if you want to get into this company at like a buck 55, something like that. Maybe a stink bid down here around buck 30. And Goviex, David says, Steve, what are your long-term thoughts on Goviex? I'm down quite a bit, and I think Rick Rule doesn't own it anymore. Are you hoping for a comeback? You know, I never, I, I don't own uh, Goviex. Um, well, that's not true. I've got URNJ, and uh, UR, so, yeah, I guess I do have a little bit, but I, I didn't buy this one straight up. Niger is very risky. <laughs> they have a coup going on. Uh, it looks like it's getting sorted out. And then right when you think everything's systems go, then the Americans pull out of uh, Niger with our drone base. And, you know, right next door is the Wagner Group. Uh, I, I own Global Atomic for free. Uh, so I, I don't really uh, pay as much attention to Niger as I probably should because I'm not highly invested in it. And whatever I have over there, I it doesn't cost me anything now. You know, I, I made enough in the stock that I sold it, paid my taxes and then kept a little extra for myself. And I'm just letting the rest ride for free. And, and if it goes, it goes. So I'm probably not the best guy to ask on this. We're going to have Justin Hewn on in uh, a couple of weeks. So be sure to check out the community tab when we put up submit questions for Justin Hewn, and maybe we can uh, ask him uh, not directly about the company, but uh, we, can, we can talk about Niger and then we will indirectly talk about the company. <laughs> All right, and SMR, I haven't brought this one up for a while. I brought it when everyone was asking about it, when it was up here, quickly crashed. And I just wanted to bring it up as a, uh, you know, take a look again, okay? If you were uh, one of the guys that, that wrote me and were buying down here, look at what you've done already okay in just a very short period of time in a matter of a couple of months you've had more than a double okay this is a really cool spot to go past the point of concern right so sell your initial investment pay sell a little bit more to pay your taxes and then sell a little bit more for being so smart and then keep the rest for free and if this company actually pulls this off and starts, you know, uh, uh, coming up with these small modular nuclear reactors, uh, you're going to be in uh, the driver's seat of something that is probably going to go parabolic someday. But look at the technicals here, getting pretty stretched. I don't think this is a bad time to take profits, but maybe it keeps going. We'll see. Gaps like this usually get filled. So... Does it get filled on Monday? Does it get filled a month from now? Does this run up to $12? I have no idea. But, you know, keep in mind where you bought it. And I think this would be a really neat place to move uh, past the point of concern. All righty. And Antonio says, as always, oh, yeah, Antonio, you wrote in last week and you said, uh, could we do more on your long-term dividend portfolio? Well, I think that idea, to Antonio, was probably even more popular than the coal idea. Uh, I've never gotten more thumbs up or smiley face emojis than now. Uh, Mark wrote, would love a dividend episode, 28 thumbs up. Eric, I love the idea of doing a show on big dividends, 12 thumbs up. And we got a whole bunch of comments. Lindsay, I'm in it to win it when it comes to dividends. Uh, Frank Sinatra, old blue eyes says, yeah, man, let's see dividend stocks. I'm old and need income. Gold says, episode on dividends. Yes, please. Spots on a dog. Always enjoy your show. And yes to a show on dividends. Steve Kelly would love to see a dividend show. John, approaching retirement, a dividend episode would be divine and highly appreciated. And Zeet says, Germans also love dividends. Smiley, winky face. All right. Uh, so I think the peanut gallery has spoken. Uh, thanks for the feedback, and uh, we'll do a episode on dividends. That might even be something that maybe I could put out as some kind of like, um, uh, I don't know, a product or, or folder or portfolio or something like that. I don't know. 
But yes, I'll follow up with this. Uh, okay, so big part of it, if you want to start now, uh, oil, love oil. Uh, oil is down 1% for the weight week. I think this actually has risk of breaking down. So not only technically here on the charts, I mean, we do have a fair amount of uh, support where we're at now, but I could really see this getting down into the 72s and possibly even down here around, you know, 68 to 65, something like that. If we're going into a recession, that is going to be less demand for goods and services and things that move stuff around the world is diesel, which is made from oil. So as we outlined last week, um, this is a real easy way to play it. Uh, if you didn't catch the dividend episode or the starting of the dividend episode, go back to last week's Monday market moves. And I explain this in detail with all the percentages and everything and how you basically buy on the more, more on the way down. Um, so XLE is up 2% for the, uh, for the week, but I think there's a real good chance that these are going to hit maybe even number four. You know, I think there's probably a 20% chance that we get back down to here which would be amazing because then we could double down and uh, and get more. I won't be doubling down. I'll be adding about 30% uh, if all of these hit. But yeah, like oil a lot. Best oil company on the planet, Exxon Mobil, up 3.5% for the week. Looking uh, looking great, but I uh, actually it doesn't look great because it went up. I want it to go down. <laughs> I want it to go down, down. Uh, I'd like to get it down here around like 109, ideally for the cup and handle pattern to hold. We don't want it to go below 109, so I got a limit order in here for 110. And Chevron, this one actually had a really nice entry point here on Wednesday. I just, uh, I got so much Exxon, I, I didn't want to get any more Chevron. I got a lot of Exxon through XLE too, so um a lot of Chevron in there, but yeah, great entry point here on Wednesday. Just if it comes back down here to the 200 moving average and you want more or uh, initial position in Chevron, I think that's a great place to do it. I'll just go here to the financials so you guys can see the dividend. It's almost 4% at current share price. And look, they just, we'll go back here to 2017, look a buck 08, a buck 12. It just, it just keeps going up. You know what I mean? Like these guys are like dividend aristocrats. I, I think it's like 36 years in running. The dividend has been moving up each year, not percentage wise, but dollar amount. So you get a raise every single year. I mean, pretty incredible. Blackstone Minerals, our favorite one of all. Uh, this is just an absolute boss. Their dividend is north of 10%. Um, so we had the limit order hit back down here. I uh, got in for, what is that, 1563. Shot back up. Would like to see it correct back down. Hopefully these limit orders down here for 1525 and then $15.01 hit. Uh, but biases to the upside for next week. Hopefully oil comes down and then it'll drag these down, down with it. And freehold royalties up 7.2%. Uh, so we're saying back here for quite a while that, and, and it wasn't super scientific. We're just lining up the back support right back here around $13 and 50 cents. So if you got it in down here, now these guys pay a dividend of nine cents every month. Look at this. And they've generally been going up. They had a hiccup here during COVID. So don't forget that. But since then it's been increasing and we're currently at nine cents every month. So if you got down here at $13.50 at nine cents every month, that's a buck 80 a year, assuming they don't lower their dividends like they did during COVID, uh, you locked in 8%, right? Compounded going forward, pass it on to your grandchildren, right? Now, if you were to do that right now at $14.47, I did the math, and your dividend is only 7.5%, right? So if you lock it in here, you get 7.5. If you lock it in here, you get 8. Now, imagine that compounded over years or even decades, okay? Try to get these as cheap as possible, and as it gets cheaper, buy more. Woodside Energy, down 0.6%. Love the dividend on this company. 
hate this call option that I put in here. I should have sold it right here. I just thought it was going to keep going. It did not. Um, we're going to have uh, Rick Rule on the episode next week. So uh, he'll be on the show June 6th. So submit your questions under the community tab. I'm also going to be going on uh, Capital Cosm with Danny on June 4th. So check out Danny's channel. I'll put a link down in the show notes. Uh, he pretty much does what we do over here. He talks to the smartest minds in the business and basically follows their guidance. So like his channel a lot. I think he's going to start doing more uh, live streams and taking live questions. He did one uh, yesterday and that was pretty cool. All right. And Petrobras went through their CEO change. Apparently it's their sixth one in four years. Share price shot down after that. Uh, we got a couple of entries in here. Got one more limit order in down here for $14.50. Hopefully it hits. Now, remember, we got a dividend coming up. X dividend date is in two weeks. So if you want this dividend in September, you got to get your order in before June 13th. And you'll get uh, 34 cents for every share that you buy. So would like to see this hit this 200 day moving average and then come back down. If oil gets hit, this will probably come down and meet it. Natural gas up 2.7% for the week just hitting right on this 200 moving average. And uh, yeah, looking good. This is uh, natural gas divided by oil. So we're not at the historically cheap prices anymore. It's run up quite a bit since then uh, in comparison to oil. What is that, 50%? Oh no, even more, almost 70. Uh, so basically you're comparing the cost here of natural gas to oil and uh, Natural gas is getting more expensive and oil is getting cheaper, so this chart is moving up. But we can see how exaggerated this can get at times, and basically that's what we're <laughs> waiting for. All right, and Kingfisher says, Hi, Steve. Saw a recent episode with Rick Rule. You mentioned looking for a natural gas fund that tracks the natural gas futures directly. There is one I'm aware of, and the ticker is UNL. All right, so this is interesting. Thank you. Uh, for putting this in. Um, I don't remember if I looked this up before or not, but what I'm going to do here is take the natural gas futures and we will overlay this on this fund. Let me go out to the weekly here so we can get a better time frame. And you can see it does line up pretty well. If you look at the peaks and valleys here, so the orange is the spot price of natural gas and the uh, bar chart here in the background is this fund and you're right it does seem to line up pretty good as we go through here it's a pretty good correlation so maybe we will be able to play this uh let me go to the daily here there we go maybe we will be able to play this um, in this fund i'd like to see it come back down a little bit i i might actually be making an entry into this We'll see. Yeah, I like it. Okay, thank you. Stay tuned. All right, Devon Energy. All right, love this company a lot. Up 3.1% for the week. So we ran a retracement here from the low to the high. We got the 38% uh, uh, retracement, 50 and 61.8. And uh, coming back down through here, we just hit on the 200 moving average, broke through it, and then bounced to the upside. So if you were going to get in and you wanted some Devon, this is kind of an interesting point to get it at because uh, I wouldn't be buying like on Monday. I mean, this could be a breakout. See how we got this, see how we got this yellow uh, 14 simple moving average right here. And then we've got the RSI just punched right through it. Stochastic sloping up. Uh, MACD is just starting to slope up. So maybe if you're buying breakouts, this isn't a bad point. I personally would wait for a double bottom. I would wait for this to come up and then come back down right around lining up with this or possibly hitting on the 200 moving average and then bouncing slightly up. And then that would be my entry point. If that happens, I will be adding more. If you don't have any, I don't think now is a bad time uh, to get in. But I just want to I, I just want to see that confirmation of the double bottom, which may never come. You know, uh, that's the risk of, of waiting for more confirmation. See, something like this, I feel 55 uh, percent uh, sure that this is going to keep going up. If we get a double bottom here and then it reverses like up like that. Now I move up to 70 percent. 
Does that make sense? So you get much more uh, conviction. The problem is, is you got to wait for it and you have to, uh, you know, it, it may never come. It may slip through your fingers, but the certainty goes way, way up. All right, equitable down a quarter of 1%. We got quite a bit of support right here around $39. Uh, so wouldn't mind an entry point into there. I pulled the pipe dream and limit order down here for 33. It just, it just never hit and I don't think it will. Uh, but yeah, would like to see this come back down. About to get a golden cross here in equitable. And coal, coal is, uh, okay, so thermal coal has closed the week at 140, we'll call it 144. Matt Cole, here we are. Okay, back up at 250. All right, so looking fantastic. Starting to actually take off. The coal ETF is running away on us. Uh, it's up 2% for the week. Last week, it was at 7.5 million in assets. Now we're up to 9.4 million in assets under management. Okay, we adjusted the limit order up here for 2360. Okay, I think these are probably pipe dream limit orders down here. Th this may be slightly uh, misleading when you look at this chart, like, oh my God, it's running away from me. Well, if you look at the entry right back down here, the cheapest one we got at like, I don't know, $22.50 and run it up to where it is now, that's only an 11% move. It's not huge. It, I mean, it's, it's something. Uh, but it's not like, you know, this this chart makes it a little deceiving, like, oh, my God, it's up 50%. No, it's not. Uh, so it's only a 10% move from the cheapest price that we got it. This may be one of theirs. I think we're coming out of shoulder season. I need to schedule Matt Warder. And uh, I may just throw my final bet into this and then forget it. Um, but I will try to wait for some kind of pullback. Next level of support on this is going to be around $24.25, something like that. $24.25. And Glencore, looking fantastic. Love this company. It's uh, flat for the week. It's kind of in a resistance area right here. So when we, when we scroll out here, you can see there's several tops right here that it's hitting kind of right in that range. We need to break through here and then the next uh, uh, resistance will be up around 1375. I don't see any entries in here. I'd like to see it come back down maybe around the 200 moving average and that might uh, create a good one. Not a very good dividend for the next year or so, but with their tech acquisition, they're just paying that back. Uh, and uh, after that, I think the dividends will continue quite well. And Alpha Metallurgical Resources, AMR, Matt Warder's number one pick, <clears throat> had the limit orders moved up to uh, $290. Hopefully it hits. Don't know if it will. We might be just coming out of shoulder season and that's it. Uh, come, you know, October, November, we're probably going to be trading in this uh, 375 to 410 range. Um, this one, I'm not just going to throw my hat in here. I'm going to be patient and wait, but the risk is you, you, you don't get it. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll see. And Warrior Met Cole, great entry point right back here. And of course I missed it. Uh, hopefully this will come back down and touch around the 50 or maybe the 100 moving average to create a second chance. BTU. Uh, feeling pretty stupid selling my uh, option way too early uh, after I told the story last week. <laughs> I said uh, what I thought was a very unrealistic uh, price for my option. And after talking with my trading partner, Eric, for about half an hour and dissecting this company, he's like, you should really probably pull that thing. So I logged in to pull it and it had already sold. So Egg on my face, should have kept that, but glad I got uh, these two long-term holds in down here at 20, 22, what was it, 22 bucks, oh, 22.98 and 22.22. Maybe I just liked a bunch of twos. Uh, so gonna be holding this one for a while. I had another limit order down here, I think for 21.50, but that's, that's not gonna hit. Okay, and ARLP, Doug says, could you add ARLP? To your thermal coal, high dividend yield. Yes, sir, it is. And let me just show everyone here, 11.74%. I mean, so we got some competition for Blackstone here and uh, freehold. Uh, so 3 billion market cap. Uh, this thing is just a boss when it comes to dividends. Uh, it did get 
uh, uh, hit uh, right after COVID. So they were killing it. You can see 50 cents a share, 55, and then boom, 40, 10. Okay, so when it got in the toilet, if you backed up the truck then, it got really cheap. I think it got down to five bucks a share. And uh, good on you if you caught it. But they've been paying 70 cents a share uh, since 20, early 2023. So just a boss when it comes to dividends. Um, how low did that go during COVID? Oh, even lower, like three bucks, $2.80. I mean, that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. As far as today, I do not see any entries. See, we're tapping on some resistance. We got past that, but look at how stretched the technicals are here. I think I might look at this one for the dividend portfolio. Yeah. Um, okay. Want to see it come back down. General buying places, I think, are going to be around in here of, uh, you know, like 21 bucks around the, the 200 moving average around. See, all these moving averages are just right here. That's kind of where I'd want to see it. But we do have a golden cross, so it may just run away. All right. And this one is Stanmore. Uh, okay. So feedback says, greetings from Bavaria. Thank you. Uh, glad to have you. As always, thank you for your work. I bought Whitehaven, Warrior, Alpha, Peabody, and Arch. Good on you. I am also interested in Stanmore. Uh, Stanmore trades the last week sideways, and the chart looks like a bear flag? Question mark? Or am I missing something? Okay, so let's see. So what he's talking about here is a bear flag. Um, not a picture perfect one. Let me get some of this out of the way, and we'll blow this up. All right, so bear flag. We put the pole goes down like this. And then we run something like that. And then we run something like, now when you wrote this, eh, maybe a bear flag, it's just kind of dirty. I don't know. Um, but if it was a bear flag, uh, then it worked and it broke to the downside, then popped right back up. I like to see it a little bit more, see like, uh, where were we? It was S-R-U-U-F. See how that one trades in a pretty well-defined pattern. And this one is just a little bit more, um, just a little more dirty. I guess you could say that is a bear flag. Maybe this is just the perfectionist in me. I'm the guy that measures twice and cuts once. Uh, I suppose that's a bear flag. And if it is, it, it broke to the downside, but then popped back up. I don't really see any discernible pattern to trade into that. What's the market cap of this? Oh, 2 billion. Okay, never mind. I was thinking it was small, so. Okay, entry points here. Let me get the technicals. They're not quite sold off yet. I might look for something down here around a double bottom, maybe around three bucks. That, that might be kind of interesting. There is a decent amount of support around $3 there. So I might just keep your eye on that, on that level right there. All right, hope that helps feedback. Bitcoin, bull flag breakout. All right, uh, so here, uh, broke out of the uh, bull flag, kind of grinding sideways, might be doing like a tiny little pennant there. I don't know, um, but maybe this halving is eventually gonna start catching up and blow this thing to the upside. These are trading a little bit more like a tech stock. So I'm really excited to see what happens when we go into a recession, what, uh, what Bitcoin does. My guess is it's gonna get hammered. And by that, I mean, it's going to tank. And by that, I mean, it's going to go down, <laughs> but we'll see. All right. Platinum flat for the week, close the week at uh, 1042. So uh, here's this uh, long-term trend line right here. Let me uh, pull this back out. All right. Now this isn't super. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of trend lines, although I keep seem to, I, I, I seem to keep drawing them, uh, but it did break out above that a little bit. Um, and as far as entry points, I still really like entry points around a thousand and then back down here around 900. I think 900 is a great entry point for platinum. Bought some physical coins around then. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'd want to see this retrace a little bit, you know, unless it gets back down there, whatever I got in platinum, I got, you know, uh, but um, uh, yeah, I'd like to see it retrace a little bit more. The easiest way to play this on the stock market is PPLT. And entries into this, I really like around $85 and then $80. Uh, Palladium is also flat for the week. Got a lot of support around, oh, I'm sorry. This is the 
Uh, platinum divided by gold, still not even above half yet. I mean, oh, this is the same ratio as, uh, I think it was gold to the S&P 500, 0.444. I'm a pattern guy. Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, don't see anything into this. We just wanna see this reset and just go parabolic like it's done in the past and go to like two to one. Okay, now palladium. Palladium is also flat for the week. We got a boatload of support around where are we here? Oh, it dropped down. No, that's not flat for the week. What the heck was I thinking? Okay, palladium is down. Let's see how much it's actually down for the week. It is down 7.3%. Okay, we're actually coming up and possibly a buy point here. Okay, I gotta adjust my notes. Uh, yeah, okay, so support was around 935. It blew through that. The next level of support is gonna be down here around 860. Uh, so entry points in P-A-L-L, I would say if you've been waiting for a time to get palladium, now, <laughs> I would make your first purchase now in P-A-L-L, -L, and then your next purchase down here around 79 is going to be the next level. Now, remember, Russia is selling whatever they have, and they have palladium, uh, so they're going to be emptying their shelves. This could get lower. But sometimes you get a gift, and I believe this is one. Another way to play both of these really easily is the Sprott Physical Platinum and Palladium Trust. Close the week at 10 bucks, hitting right here on some interesting support. So we got the 200 moving average, we got the 50 moving average sloping up, probably going to create a golden cross. Uh, but had an opportunity back here at $9.50, didn't take it. Um, you know, if you want a starter position in some of these PGMs, this is the easiest way to do it and the most liquid. Uh, but I would like to see these technicals go down just a little bit more, might get cheaper. Maybe even if this just grinds sideways for a little bit, that would uh, that would be nice. But, you know, as a starter position, maybe let's say you're going to bet, make the math easy. We'll, we'll say you're going to bet 100 bucks, maybe put in like 20 now, right? And then uh, and then put another like. 30 here at $9.50 and then put your final 50 bucks in down here around like $8.75, $9, right? Okay. All right. Nickel, N-I-K-L, the Sprott Nickel Miners ETF. So our limit order back here for $13.75 hit. And then we got two down here in for $13.25 and then $12.60. Nickel is really hated right now. It's like silver was like four months ago. Okay, so I think nickel is actually going to get cheaper. Um, Got to be patient on this, but I think we want to start making our entry points into nickel now, like we did a year ago uh, for copper, right? Um, so as far as entry points down in here, maybe like set a, a, your first limit order at like 1450 and then back down in here around like 13 bucks, just kind of set them in there. Sometimes you have these violent moves, you know, like this violent move right here shooting up was the third biggest nickel miner on the planet, uh, had riots all around it. So, you know, that jeopardizes how much supply is coming out of the ground and, uh, you know, causes the price to rise. And iron ore is up a uh, buck 50 close the week at $18 and 58 cents. BHP eh, kind of uh, sideways. Yes, yeah, flat for the week. Um, interesting support right here around the uh, 200 moving average, you got the 50 below it rising 20 day moving average, but the technicals are kind of middle of the road. So, you know, real entry point was back here when we were talking about it. And just, you know, perfect double bottom, wanted to take an option. It was just too expensive and I have so much BHP as it is. Uh, I, I don't need any more, I need to stop. But uh, like this company, the dividends aren't as great as they used to be. But if we're right about the commodities bull market, this company is going to absolutely kill it. And the other company that's gonna kill it is going to be Rio Tinto. So finally getting some selling pressure on this. Um, hope, might get another entry point down here next time uh, the dividend pays. If we get anywhere down in this range here, uh, we've basically bet $30 of the 100 that we wanna bet. Uh, we're just gonna bet the next 70 <laughs> when, uh, when, uh, when it gets back down here in the $60 range. 
And Alphamin, if you're going to play tin, this is the company you want, down 1.3% for the week. If you're looking for limit orders into this, uh, I would say one is now. Uh, the next one is going to be around 75 cents, and the one after that is going to be 70 cents. Okay? And this is what we put Devon Energy into. So I call this one my Devon. Uh, I'm sorry. This is what we put Denison Mines into. We put it into Nestle. Now, why did we do this? Okay, if you watched our Adrian Day episode, he went into detail on this and how he caught Nestle back here and how he did it was he was looking at cocoa futures. So let me zoom out long term on cocoa futures. Okay, we could see the parabolic move that cocoa had. And if we do the same on coffee, look at this parabolic move that coffee has had since October of last year, just boom. And we got another little second entry here. So let me go to the day. This is coffee. See how it went up. This was where Adrian entered and then the coffee got uh, cheaper and then it spiked up. This is where I bought it, right? So Nestle, you know, their two main products are, uh, you know, uh, candy and coffee. And so if the price of those commodities go up, then their earnings go down because they have to spend more of their money buying, you know, their, their product so they can make their chocolate bars and they can make their uh, coffee and uh, they don't make as much money because the commodity is so expensive. So if you can catch a little moment like that, uh, like I did here on Wednesday, um, you know, you can catch a bottom. So thank you, Adrian Day, for that. Uh, pulled the trigger down here. What did I get it at? Uh, 99.79, closed the week at 106.30. The, the dividends on this are, are not fantastic. Uh, there's something, I mean, it's north of 2%. They only pay once a year. So you gotta be patient, you gotta wait. Uh, but they do pay and you know at the price I got it at it's right around uh, just north of two percent and um, yeah we'll see how this runs my thought with this was if I'm wrong and it continues to go down this probably isn't a horrible one to have uh, during a recession I mean you know some things are going to get whacked you know like uh, discretionary you know people aren't going to be doing I my the missus and I really love doing escape rooms, and uh, that's an industry that is probably going to get pummeled during a recession. Nobody's going to go out and pay, you know, a hundred bucks for an hour to do an escape room during a recession. But they are going to uh, buy two of the most addictive substances on the planet: sugar and caffeine. <laughs> okay, I don't think that's really going to get hit. So I think Nestle will probably do relatively well. Uh, during the recession. So I may turn this into a long term hold. My initial plan with this was to make a trade. Uh, so we'll see how this runs. You know, I, I could see this if this makes a quick run up to the 200 moving average, I might bail, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'll be I'll be watching cocoa and coffee like a hawk. Alrighty. Well, I hope you guys got something out of that. You, if you're enjoying the show, support the show. There's a link in the notes below. And thank you to all who have donated. Thank you for the super chats. Love you guys. I really enjoy doing this. And uh, I look forward to it every single week. So if you want to try out TradingView, the software, there's also a link down in the notes below. You can try it out free for 30 days. Absolutely no cost to you. And uh, you can set up all the moving averages and everything like I got. I even did a video on how to set that up. So thank you guys for tuning in. Share this with anyone that you think needs to hear it. It's probably your buddy that can't stop talking about tech stocks. You have yourself a great rest of the day, and I will talk to you next time.